Look at this art. The Highlands of Scotland. Haggis, scotch, and stags. Even a castle. Let's see if we, we're lucky to get some scallops. Yeah, let's get some scallops now. <laughs> I am officially freezing, Art. The gritty job of shucking. If you get this wrong, there's nothing I can do to save it. How the hell did he do this? What a wonderful adventure this has been. We've got scallops and seaweed. He wanted me to make macaroni and cheese to go with it. Can you believe that? I'm a wild bush cook, and the forest is my supermarket. I am a classically trained chef from the UK. From buffalo ribs to seared scallops, we explore each other's culture through food. Isn't that breathtaking? Look at that. I don't think you'll get anything better. Because this cold that wind is. is taking my breath away. <laughs> it is quite, it's fresh. But it is beautiful. Look at this art. The highlands of Scotland. Haggis, scotch, and stags. Even a castle. Absolutely stunning. Isn't that everything you need? Well, we're off to the Isle of Mull. You're taking me to Mull. Look at you it. You haven't told me exactly what for. Well, we're going to get scallops, hand dyed Isle of Mull scallops. Probably the best seafood in the world. It's seafood? I thought it was what something you did to potatoes. No, 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 no. That's a completely different thing. Hand dive Isle of Mile scallops. Wait until you have these. They're the jewels of the ocean. You're going to be amazed. We're not diving, are we? I'm not diving. You're diving. <laughs> I'm going to stay on the boat nice and dry. Send you down. You haven't failed me yet. I'm bringing Art to Tobermory on the Isle of Mull off the west coast of Scotland to meet the founder of the ethical shellfish company, Guy Grieve. His mission, quality product and marine conservation. So what, we're going to head out and hopefully I'm not going to have to jump overboard, am I? Well, I don't know. I think maybe uh, you should give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you said this has been in the water fishing for 40 years? Yeah, and uh, the design hasn't changed since the Viking era, you know? Yeah, well, well pile on board. Off you guys go. Jump on. She'll do you well. She'll do you well. <clears throat> Gallops. I started on a six meter open boat. Yeah. All I had was a flask of tea, a good jacket, a hat, and my back to the wind. But what propelled me was the fact that I was diamond mining. Because what I was picking up on the seabed in the culinary world are diamonds. This is the last really wild food that we eat on a commercial scale worldwide. And it has to be revered, and it has to be looked after. The great thing is the chefs, their buying decisions have more effect on our environment than politicians. Chefs do play a role. We formed this company, Ethical Shellfish, because we thought, well, we're taking from this garden, so if we're going to pick the apples, we, we must not trample the flowers. Yes. There's an issue of respect here. We need more <laughs> fishermen with your attitude, sir. Yes. So well, it's, it's growing. If we wish to continue eating seafood, wild seafood, then we have to adopt his method, his ideology, and his respect for the oceans and the seas. Well, let's give it a shot and see if we're lucky to get some scallops. Yeah, let's get, get some scallops now. <laughs> Down he goes. Just like that. Wow. I'd never do that. Brave man. But I'm glad someone's brave, because I'm really looking forward to some scallops. What we're doing today is hand picking, you know? You're going out there, no damage to anything. You're just singling out yeah. that individual scallop, bring it up. You're not damaging anything else. They can be dredged, which is a ghastly process where you dredge the seabed. And you know, when you see him out there, we have no right to sit in a restaurant in London and moan about the price. Look what is happening so you can sit there and eat a scallop. He's out, he's out. How do you get on down there? That was a, I had to really work hard for you people. Ah. <laughs> no, it's great. Lucky, a lucky spot. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Wow. 
Well done. Bing, bang, boom, done. He's a pro. We got out there fast, pulled in a haul right away, barely finished the sandwich. Very lucky haul, sir. I've worked with these scallops. I've eaten these scallops, and I've never actually been out and seen them harvested. And uh, incredible, you know, it gives me a whole new appreciation for what people go through to get these. That's the eggs, and that's the, that's the sperm there, and this is the muscle. And grilled, we're going to grill them just like that with seaweed butter, and they're going to be exquisite. So you uh, serve it with sperm and egg? Sperm and eggs. OK. Well, there you go, that is a bit for you, sir. Looks like bone marrow. This, to me, is the best thing in the world. To be honest, it didn't look that appetizing to me. And then when I tasted the little, the main body part, was a taste I'm not really used to, so it didn't really turn my crank. I'll wait till mine is grilled. I love you for saying that. These gourmets, they will eat everything raw. I've never had a scallop that fresh. You know, it wasn't an hour, it wasn't 10 minutes, it was actually a minute out of the water. A minute out of the water. OK, so what we have for lunch? Oh, my God. Oh. That, nice. And you know what? Not only do you know how to dive for scallops, you know how to season them properly, <laughs> and you know how to cook them properly. Well. <laughs> Quite possibly, that was one of the best scallops I've ever had. And served in its shell doesn't really get more special than that for a chef. Yeah, I mean, that is really, you know, the rather special moment. Let's see if that floats. <clears throat> Is it floating? Yeah. Is that a good sign? Oh, yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> Art and I are staying in Oban in a classic Scottish bed and breakfast overlooking the port. Our host, William Lockwood, is the quintessential example of Scottish hospitality. Sir William. Art, how are you? Come I'm in. Glad you're here. Of course. Very successful haul. Dan took me out so early that I missed breakfast. You and did. I noticed right. that you have a uh, the full Scottish on your yes. menu. Are you suggesting you might like one of those? Well, the big man's offering. Uh... Tell me more about it. What's in it? We've got lawn sausage. We've got link sausage. We've got black pudding, mushrooms, tomatoes, potato scones. So, William, how long has oatmeal porridge been around? It's been around for a long time. I'd be lying if I said I knew the dates exactly. And in these times, mm -hmm. you would actually believe it or not, the porridge would be cooked. It would be left for a couple of days until it becomes that thick. You can actually slice it with a knife. It'd be put in a drawer and would actually be taken out and put in the gentleman's sporran. What's a sporran? Well, in front of the kilt, Oh, you would that have pouch, the pouch. That's in front, kind of like a fanny pack. That's oh, <laughs> not exactly how I would describe it. But I know exactly what you mean. So, yes, nowadays we keep our iPhones and our money in it. Well, I better see how your full Monty's doing. So, what is the flat thing? The flat square thing? The flat thing? You can't call it a flat thing. <laughs> it's called lawn sausage. The lawn sausage is a mixture of pork and beef. Okay. Black pudding's the, the dark ring. Um, it's very much a and Scottish it, thing. And it's made from? I'm not sure if I should tell you, because some people are scared and they want to eat it, and then I would tell you You'd what You'd be I surprised what I've eaten. Uh, well, I was going to say it's very much blood. OK. Uh, oatmeal again. Oatmeal sausage with blood stuffed and probably in some yes. kind of... Intent. I suspect you've maybe got something similar at home. Cree people had this type of thing too. Excellent. This looks fit for a king. I can hardly wait. My pleasure. Hope you enjoy your first full Scottish breakfast. Once Art's finished overeating again, we head to the Scottish Association of Marine Scientists to meet Philip Kerrison to learn all about seaweed farming. I know nothing about seaweed, and my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, yep. is that you're involved in this process where we might end up with a commercially viable seaweed, turn it into a business. Yes, exactly. We're trying to develop methods so we can turn it into a crop and uh, for it to be wow. an income for coastal communities. What a great thing. It has historically been an industry uh, around Scotland and the UK and we're trying to bring that back. They're not looking at it as big business. They're 
talking about it as livelihood for traditional people. But how do you go about doing that? You take this wild seaweed, then what do you do? Well, we extract spores and then grow them within our hatchery for a number of months. Then we take these twines and put them out into the sea and yeah. grow them on long ropes. At the moment, we've got about two kilometers of seaweed out there, so that's 20 tons of seaweed, hopefully, wow. later on in the year. It requires no feed. It just sucks up the nutrients from the water. And it is good for the environment and the habitat. Yes, exactly. So it's all very environmentally friendly. So do you know what type of seaweed you're looking for? Absolutely no idea whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> These ones here are called dulse. It's got a very rich, smoky flavor. Mm, I like that. Ooh, it reminds wow. me of a moose jerky. I live among Coast Salish people on Vancouver Island, and they always talk about how nutritious seaweed is. This one in particular is very high in protein as well, and uh, I think it's got about twice as much iron per weight as beef. Wow. Putting this knowledge into action, we are sent to a cold, wet, windy beach to meet another scientist, Lars Brunner, who's going to show us how to harvest seaweed for ourselves. So here's a load of seaweed. I mean, it's everywhere. Is this the, this is the right stuff, isn't it? So this isn't particularly tasty tea. You can eat it, but it's full of tannins, so we like eating a dry tea bag. Oh, wouldn't, God, we don't wouldn't, that. wouldn't be very tasty. Trust me to pick up the wrong one first. <laughs> Dan loves seafood. That's his specialty. And he doesn't know a damn thing about seaweed. A little shocked. This one here is one called dulse. Um, oh, that's the dulse. Okay. That's the dulse. It's a very, very edible seaweed, both fresh and dried. Can I can we eat it now? Yeah, can try a wee bit just now. It tends to be nicer when it's dried, I tend to find. Mm. Mm. Lovely texture, though. Wow. But this has got a long history in Scotland of being eaten from, I think, the earliest records are back about 600 AD. On this little tiny beach here, we've picked up four or five different flavours. Lars knows his stuff. This is probably Laminaria digitata. This is one of the kind of the longer lived kelps. These ones can live for many, many years. This has got a lot more solid. Interesting texture, you know, it's got it's got something there. I wouldn't mind almost doing a salad with it or something. It's a wonderful thing. Just nibbling on a few bits then out of a rock pool would tasty, you know, the different textures and flavours. And um, of course, everything's seasoned so perfectly because it's covered in seawater. Yeah, this is just some sections of this tiny wee one called pepper dulse. Try a wee bit of just the end of it's very good. As a very, mm. see the taste, it's got a very kind of peppery iodine oh, taste. Oh my word, it. it tastes like garlic. Yeah, that's that's very good. But well, where do we, so we need to pick oh, some oh, of this. Oh, yeah, a tiny bit of dulse, well done. How are you doing, Art? What do you found? Nothing. Look, nothing. <laughs> I put mine in already. Rubbish. It is very cold. It is very bleak. And I was getting hit with waves, and the rocks are very, very slippery. So you've actually got to be kind of careful just out here picking seaweed. It's a dangerous sport, isn't it? And compared to this Scottish chap who looked like some sort of mountain goat, we look like wounded seals rolling about on the beach, I think. No. I am officially freezing, Art. A popular tourist destination and the gateway to the Scottish Isles, the fishing port of Oban nestles into a small bay, and on the waterfront, we find a modern, family-run restaurant called Iask. It means fish in Gaelic. Yes, Chef, we um, we've got some cooking to do. I've got some scallops to cook. Scallops Any cook? chance we can jump up here and, uh, and use your kitchen? Oh, you want to take over from my kitchen? I want to take, I want to take over. <laughs> I can your... give you for the kitchen for half an hour. Half but... hour's enough? Yeah, that's, plenty. that's all we got. They've got service. But they have to taste your scallop, too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course. Oh, he, good. he drives a hard bargain. <laughs> yeah. As I've been uh, spending a few days in Old Ben, I thought I was the brownest guy in town. Isn't this the factory where white folks come from? The kitchen is yours. Thank, Thank you. you for the use of your kitchen. Thank you. Dan, now we've got 28 minutes. 28 minutes, we better get going. To cook these scallops, beautiful flavored butter. So, I've got some lemon juice in there. Okay. And I also want a touch of salt. Start mixing that a touch. Let's get some fennel seed in there. And bivalves, in my humble opinion, need chili. That some sounds chili. so delicious, doesn't it? Bivalves. I'm gonna have me some deep fried bivalves. <laughs> touch of chili in there, very good. So a little bit of that into the butter. That's a little bit of the uh, 
powdered seaweed. Powdered seaweed. And now, these corals. We're going to remove the white. This coral art. Right. That looks pretty damn gross. <laughs> Especially when you realize what it is. What are you going to do about these orange lumps? They're going to be delicious. <laughs> and when we come to cook this art, yes. a little splash of something dry. We got scotch? No? No, 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 no scotch. We got Pinot Grigio, which is perfect. A little splash of white wine in the shell. And you know what? To finish up art, as you can see, I have garlic. So I am going to use some garlic, but I'm all. Look at that, look at this. Very neat and tidy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, chef. I'm going to use some of this. The dulse. The dulse, yeah. Do you reckon this stuff's rinsed okay? I rinsed it five times. You did, promise, okay. promise? Only yeah. an idiot would leave big rocks. If I look across the dulse. table and the chef's chewing on grit and spitting it out, his... <laughs> I tell you what, you're for it, huh? I'm going to look such a fool. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Good man, that's enough. Mix right. it all up, huh? Mix all that up, and uh, we'll say our butter's done. I think I'm pretty excited about it. Well, does it meet your approval? Yes, I think it's great. So, what's next? So, oh, look at this. These scallops you got. Amazing. So, you take a butter knife. All right. And you just go in there and then work it back until you. Just flip the shell. Work your knife, pull back that shell. We get rid of the stomach sack and everything that is running along there. Just cut along there carefully, and out it comes. And that is one of the finest things ever to come out of the ocean. You've got to get on and, um, and, and do all of these. I've got some other prep to work ah, on. Ah, I see. The gritty job of shucking. Well, it's a commie chef job, but it's very important. If you get this wrong, there's nothing I can do to save it. So take your time, please, sir, and uh, do it properly, OK? How did you know I was a commie? Good <laughs> How the hell did he do this? They're slippery. They're slimy. It takes some getting used to. Dan, he's an old pro at it, but I'm not. How did he do that? I don't know, it seems like a pretty easy job to me, but I think I put the fear of God in him because I said, be careful, they're expensive. I'm messing up here. I'd rather plunge my hands into a hot steaming pile of moose guts to look for a kidney than I would to have to clean a whole bin of those scallops. There you are. Jesus. How'd it go? That's shot. Let's see how you did, more uh, to the point. I'm sorry about this. What the hell went wrong with that Well, one? it climbed up. Well, I hope there's enough. I imagine that's how Let's you'd see. feel if someone was prodding you, huh? Climb right up. Beautiful. Nice work. That That's hard work. That's slimy. What about that? What, what went wrong with that one? And that's going on your plate. I can't, I can't send that to the owner or the chef. What's wrong with you? That's the one, but nice work on that one. I cracked a few shelves, and a couple fell down the sinkhole. Wonder how much that's worth, eh, Dan? Now we're in business. Now they're wow. the sizzle. OK. Why don't you get a selection of seaweed? Fill that up. You Overflowing. Really, you really tr trust me with the plating. We wanted some nice seaweed. Though. A little variety. You know, this is nature's way of serving something. It's absolutely beautiful. You're going to do that for every serving. For every serving. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you better go easy on our stash. There we go. Just like that. Wonderful. So now we take our shells. Take the scallop. Look at that. Look at that. Mahogany brown. Beautiful. That's what we're looking for. Take them out. Put them back in the shell like this. Now we want a little bit of that beautiful butter that we made. You just let her, let her melt over the top. Just a smallest splash of white wine. Tiny. And now we're going to pop the whole thing back into the oven. And uh, this is it. We're not going to serve any macaroni. You know, food isn't just about filling your belly. Food is about enjoying it. That is one of the most exquisite lunches you can have. What a wonderful adventure this has been. We've got scallops and seaweed. I knew nothing about seaweed whatsoever, and I've learned a bit about it. The seaweed on your plate isn't actually the seaweed you eat. That's just a base. I wanted to sort of capture the essence of the seaside, if you like. But what we do have is some seaweed inside the butter. And I hope you enjoy. We just grilled the scallops with this lovely little butter with some chili and fennel. And 
I've just grilled them in the shell. The shell forms this vessel, which has captured a bit of white wine, a bit of butter, and the juice from the scallop. So do tuck in a glass of crisp wine and some crusty bread. I think it should be a rather good lunch. Thank you. Scotch is for later. <laughs> Gosh. This wine goes very nice. Yeah, it's nice and crisp, isn't it, you know? Very much so. Good. Sir William, what are your thoughts on the scallops? Tremendous. The one thing that surprised me, I think, is that I've never had chilli with scallops before. But for me, it works perfectly. Very nice <laughs> and beautifully presented, so thank you. Great, thank you. And the butter, wow, fantastic. Dr Phil. What are your thoughts on how the seaweed has been utilised in the butter? Oh, it's very tasty. Adds a nice, a nice smokiness to it. It's really good. And you know where the smoky flavour came from? I think the, so. The dulse that yeah, we sprinkled on, right from your factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lars, did I absolutely destroy your beautiful seaweed? <laughs> No, I can only reiterate what everybody else has said. It was absolutely delicious, really, really lovely. A beautiful combination. Art, it sounds like uh, we might have done OK. Even without the side of macaroni. Yeah. I... <laughs> he wanted me to make macaroni and cheese to go with it. Can you believe that? <laughs> Teaweed and scallops. Teaweed and scallops. Yeah. 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 That's the place to go. Right oh, Oh, it's absolutely blowing a gale out here. Blowing your uh, umbrellas. I know, it's, sort of, it's looking worse for wear, isn't it? Well, that turned out all right. The scallops, huh? Well, the scallops are good. I'm not sure about this weather, though. Well, where shall we head next with our little uh, apron? Somewhere warmer. Good. Let's go south. Let's go, go to England. It's very civilized there, you know. For more recipes, tips, and bad jokes, check out moosemeatandmarmalade.com.